Beautiful. Magdish. Full Magdish will be far now. Yeah. <laughs> For 18 awful years, Somalia has been at war with itself. Mogadishu looks more like ancient Rome than a modern city, with hundreds of thousands of its shell-shocked residents abandoning their capital in the last year alone. Which makes these walking wounded the survivors of what is probably the biggest humanitarian crisis in the world. A crisis so dangerous to report that stories from inside the war zone are rarely seen or heard. Abu Kar's friends have all deserted the city. He complains that Somalia has been in turmoil for so long that only his generation can remember peace. And he's desperate for money to fly to London or anywhere rather than here. I've never touched a rifle. Neither my sons nor my generation did. We flee here and there. When fire comes here, we go there. We've really seen everything. Hunger, death, everything. In Abu Kar's city, Islamist rebels and forces loyal to the president are fighting a perpetual turf war and woe betide anyone caught in the crossfire. At the city hospital, you find them, scores of civilians, the doctors say they have space for 80 patients here, yet they treat over 200, including this 12-year-old girl who's been shot. By which side, or why, nobody can say. Because of the bullet? Yeah, because of the bullet. The bullet is in the neck of... She cannot move the far to uh, the legs and arms. She cannot move. She cannot sit. This place is no sanctuary from the fighting, for Islamist gunmen have threatened to kill the chief doctor, accusing him and his staff of treating unbelievers. So it's a wonder the doctors turn up for work at all, as the casualty numbers ebb and flow. It depends on what happens in the city. When there's war, the hospital is busy. When the city is quiet, the hospital is quiet as well, but the overall situation is getting worse day by day. These distressing scenes from last month are a case in point. There was fighting around the docks, but a mortar hit this medical centre, killing several disabled men in their wheelchairs and turning what was a kitchen into a gruesome morgue. At least two children also lost their lives here. How old? 14 years old and 13 years old. Now incense is burnt to get rid of the stench of death and the bodies are prepared for burial. We, we don't have that. You don't know. Mortar from... The mortar. Mortar? Yes. But who? Uh, the inside. Shabab, I don't know. You don't know. We don't know. Yes, we don't know. There is a semblance of authority amid the ruins. This building may have no windows, but it's the nerve centre of the Somali Navy. Inside, a full admiral and his adjutants in their peaked caps, pledging to clean up Somalia's notorious pirate-infested waters. We have a very strong will, and we believe that we as Navy officers can do something to calm the waters in this area and get rid of the pirates. The admiral's motley crew of marines seems raring to go even if they are wearing the caps of the Spanish football team, Real Madrid. But there's a far bigger problem. Somalia's entire fleet has been stolen, and right now the Admiral commands no ships at all. Nobody knows where they are. They were stolen. The Admiral took our cameraman down to his coastline, through defences levelled flat, like the set of a Hollywood disaster movie. In April, the international community pledged $200 million to Somalia's so-called government, but the money, like the Admiral's Navy, is nowhere to be seen. And with no prospect of his new recruits taking on pirates, other navies, including the American and British, are spending millions doing it themselves. The sound of sporadic gunfire forces our team back to their car. 
and seconds later, much of the Somali Navy is running for cover. Two Somali militia have started shooting at each other nearby, the two militia supposedly on the same side. Our crew seeks shelter and drives to the compound of a local merchant who's on the phone. They're attacking as usual, he says. It's normal. And laughs it all off without a flinch. Later, he lays on a tour of his abandoned warehouse. There are no customers and nobody to serve them anyway. But though the staff have fled, their boss will not. There are some people like me who don't want to surrender. I don't want to be a refugee or go to Italy or somewhere. I couldn't stand it. There is a Somali football team, though it always plays away games. Inviting foreign teams to play in Mogadishu is pointless. And it's a constant battle to stop the Somali players from signing up for another national pastime. The warfare all around them. Somalia's so-called government controls about one-third of the capital and is holed up on this hill. The gunmen are armed by the Americans, who fear al-Qaeda is coming. Somali politicians counter that the West has failed them and that al-Qaeda is already here. Al-Qaeda has moved from where it used to be and came to Somalia, and they are fighting here as a foreigners. And you understand, actually, to the all international community forces who are in Afghanistan, who are in... Uh, in Iraq couldn't actually defeat them. So what do you expect actually a country who never been actually given the kind of the support? There is foreign support in the shape of 5,000 Ugandan and Burundian peacekeepers. 3,000 short of what the African Union promised, but a lifeline for the city nevertheless. Hand in your weapon at the base door and the army doctors will see you. Up to 800 patients are treated daily, many with gunshot wounds, apparently safe in the knowledge that their fellow Africans won't turn the sick and hurt away, even if it breaks all the rules. Every night I pray that it remains calm and we continue giving the services, because we are going against the regulations to keep them in the camp, but we are still doing it. Two days later, this soldier's charity was answered with an act of terror. Two Somali suicide bombers drove into this base and killed 17 peacekeepers and four civilians. In a city so riddled with danger that even a dozen camels were mown down for straying too close to the front line. In a city awash with blood.